G'day everyone, welcome back to another XS650 video. It's been a while since I posted a video, again, sorry about that. Um, I have been busy with uh, non-bike related stuff mainly. As you can see behind me, my workspace is looking a bit better. I built shadow boards, light boxes, and uh, it really helps like, with organising the shed and also makes the videos look a bit better. I've also been trying to sort out the charging system on the bike, um, and it's really been kicking my ass. But I've learned a lot in the process, and I'll uh, take you through what I've learned. I'm by no means an expert, but it may help you for me to relay what I've learned about the charging system. So, as I probably mentioned in a previous video, I did buy a solid state regulator rectifier. Um, the ad said that it was a plug-in option for this bike. It wasn't. Um, with the bike in its current configuration, one of the brushes is grounded. But to work with the new solid state regulator rectifier, I um, had to unground one of the brushes, or so I figured out later. I didn't do that, I hooked it up, I just trusted the ad, I hooked it up with the bike in its current configuration, and it blew up. But I won't go into that because that's its own saga. Okay, so this is the alternator. It consists of the stator, the rotor, and the brush assembly here. Um, I've already had it apart, so it's just kind of loosely back together. This is the stator. It consists of three windings of wires. It looks like just one, but there's actually three separate windings in there. And each of those connect to a phase wire, which is the three white wires on this wiring loom here. They're all pretty black now, but they were white once. And it also has the brush assembly on it. And you can see in here, these are your two brushes. This is the rotor. You can see it's got two slip rings on it and those connect with the brushes on the stator housing. The uh, rotor itself is an electromagnet. It's got a winding inside um, and it's energized uh, through the brushes. So the way it works is voltage comes in through the outer brush, onto the outer slip ring, through the coil. The other end of the coil is connected to the inner slip ring, which is connected to this brush, which is to ground. When you apply voltage to the rotor, it creates a magnetic field. When you spin that magnetic field, the magnetic flux intersects the windings on the stator which creates an AC voltage, which is then transmitted through the three phase wires. This is an electromagnetic style alternator, being that the rotor is an electromagnet and you need to apply voltage to it for it to, do, uh, for it to charge anything. There's other types like uh, permanent magnet type rotors, which just has actual magnets there and you don't need to put any uh, voltage to it to get any charge but this is the original one that comes on an XS650. All right, so I've wired this thing up with all the original equipment. It's a bit messy at the moment, but I'll sort that out. Here is the original regulator. I'll show you from the other side. Here it is here. So the original regulator on these things is basically just a high and low resistance switch. It's got three wires coming out of it. It's got a brown, a green, and a black. The brown is the voltage sensing wire. If the regulator senses that it's getting too much voltage, what it'll do is it'll switch to its high resistance setting. Then through the green wire, it will send a lower voltage to the rotor, which will reduce the magnetic field and then reduce the amount of charge that the alternator is putting out. If it senses a low voltage coming out of the alternator it'll switch to the low resistance setting and it'll put a higher voltage out through the green wire to the rotor increasing the magnetic field thus increasing the charge that it puts out the black wire is just ground down here we've got the rectifier the rectifier has five wires coming out of it it's got these three white wires a red wire and a black wire. The three white wires are the three phase wires coming out of the uh, stator. 
So that is AC voltage coming out of these. It goes into the rectifier. That rectifies it to DC voltage. And from there, DC voltage is put out through the red wire, through the thermal breaker, back into the battery. Once again, the black wire is just ground. All right, so what I did is I wired it up in its original configuration, um, as you saw before. Started the bike up, and the volts at the battery only went up by about 0.2 of a volt, even at about 2,500 RPM. So there's clearly a problem with the charging system. So I've got the alternator apart. I've already tested the components, but just so you know what I've done, I'll uh, take you through what I did now. So we take the uh, multimeter, set it to ohms. And to test the rotor, we test the resistance between the two slip rings and it should end up at between five and seven ohms. So I'll do that now. And that's sitting on 5.4. I'll see if I can do this and show you the reading on the ohm meter at the same time. 5.5, so that's good. Right, the next test is to make sure that the rotor winding itself hasn't shorted onto the body of the rotor. And to do that, we test between each slip ring and the body, and it should, it should show infinite resistance. And it does. Next slip ring. Infinite resistance. So the rotor's fine. All right, so here we've got the stator and we're gonna test that. Once again, the uh, multimeter is set to ohms and we'll test the resistance between each of the windings. Now, as I said before, each winding is attached to each of these three white wires. It's supposed to be continuous, so we'll test between those and it should come up between 0.8 and one ohm resistance. So that's one white wire, that's the other, and we've got 0.9 ohm resistance between those two, that's good. 0.8 between those two. I'm trying to do this so you can see it, it's really awkward. Oh, get in there. and 0.9 between those. So, that test, it passes that test. The next test is, we test between each of the wires and the housing of the stator, and it should come up with infinite resistance. There should be no connection between the housing and the windings. If there is, it means it's shorted to the housing. So, we'll just pick this one, and then place this on the housing and it's coming up as infinite. And because all of those windings are actually uh, continuous, it should come up as infinite for the other two as well, but we'll just test it. Infinite there, and infinite there. So the stator passes the test. Now, before, it actually didn't pass that test. But I thought, well, seeing as it's stuffed anyway, I'll just give it a clean and see whether I can find where the short is. Uh, I cleaned it, dried it out, tested it again, and it came up good. I cannot for the life of me find anywhere that it's shorting to the housing just by looking at it. Um, and I'm of two minds. Do I put it back on the bike, hope that it charges, and then hope that it doesn't do it to me again? But that must mean that there is some insulation missing somewhere, and all of the gunk and the shit in there was shorting it out to the body. So if it was to get that dirty again, it would short again. So do I spend 250 bucks on a new stator or do I put this back on and hope for the best? I don't know. I'm pretty sure that's what my problem was, but we'll go through and we'll test the rest of the charging, sorry, test the rest of the charging system anyway. 
All right, so this is the regulator. Um, I've got the shop manual here, just as I go through it, because there's a fair few steps and I'll just forget. The first thing that we're gonna do is test the earth wire. So, ohms once again, one to earth and one to the base of the regulator, and it should, so, it should show uh, zero resistance. That bit's a bit dirty, so we'll try this bit. Zero ohms resistance, or thereabouts. That's good. All right, so the next thing we have to do is take off the regulator cover. Let's get this in the right spot. All right, so you can see here, you've got two contact points. There's the one at the top, that's the low RPM position. And from what the book says, that should have no resistance or very low resistance. So that's the uh, low RPM setting and that'll feed a full 12 volts to the alternator, or sorry, to the rotor. In the down position like this, where it's connected in the uh, lower position, that's the high resistance setting. So that's for high RPM and that will feed a reduced amount of voltage to the, to the rotor and therefore give you less charge out of your alternator so you don't overcharge your battery. So the first position we want to test it in is the low RPM position. And we'll test between the brown and the green wire. And there should be, let me just check the book. No resistance. Don't turn off. Let's go back there. Right, it should read no resistance. Apparently two ohms resistance is too much. So we'll do that now. So brown wire and green. Let me get this thing sorted. Right. If I can get a buddy good contact on it, let's give that another go. Right, zero ohms resistance, so that's good. All right, so the next position we're gonna test is with it midway, so not contacting either point. Um, that's gonna be pretty hard for me to achieve. So I'm just gonna get something to put in, in between the two contact points to hold them apart. Right, so I've just got two pieces of little uh, pretty thin cardboard. All right, that should do it. All right, and this should read nine to 10 ohms resistance. Ten point six or ten point five. That's pretty close. All right, and now we want to read it in the high RPM position, so all the way down with it contacting the bottom contact point. So I'll just jam it down there now. And before I go any further, this should read between seven and eight ohms resistance. Eight point three. That's pretty close. So I'm happy that that's going to be doing its job. Right, so what we're gonna test now is the rectifier, this thing down here. To do that, you need to put your multimeter on diode test, that's this symbol here. Let's try and set that up so you can actually see the readings. All right, what we're testing for is directional flow through the, uh, through the rectifier. Current should be able to flow one way, but not the other. So you take one probe, place it on your power output from the uh, rectifier and then place the other probe on each of the three white phase wires. And we should see 0.5 on all of them. And we do. Then reverse the probes. Stay there. And we should see an open circuit. That one's open. That one's open, and so is that one. All right, so now we'll do the same on the earth. All right, and 0.5 there, 0.5 there, and 0.5 there. Once again, reverse the probes, 
Make sure current can't flow back the other way. Open circuit. Open circuit. Open circuit. So the rectifier is good. is the component that I'm a bit sus on, um, being that when I first tested it, it said the windings were shorted to the housing, but after a clean, I've tested it and it comes up fine. I just want to see if it charges, so I've got it all loosely hooked back up. Um, the bike's not running the best, I've got a lot of carb jetting to do on the timing, but it does kind of run. So bear with me while I get this thing started and we'll just see if it charges. direct from the output from the rectifier and the regulator's got nothing to sense so it's just going to keep climbing the more I rev but it charges. Now I've got to make the decision whether I trust that stator or being that it was shorted to the housing so there's clearly some bare wiring in somewhere or I just get a new one. Decisions. Alright guys that's where I'm going to leave this one. Um, sorry again that it's taken me so long to get this video out. I'll do my best to get more videos more frequently in the future. Um, but yeah, I'll spend the next couple of days thinking about whether I keep that stator or not. Um, and probably bug the crap out of my dad asking him what he thinks because he knows far more than I do. But yeah, thanks for watching guys. Um, please subscribe if you haven't already. Leave us a like and a comment and I'll see you in the next video.